Hello. Good to be with you uh, today. Good to be with you. Um, this will be our service that we will uh, broadcast on our Sunday's radio time slot. So uh, we want to turn to the camera and say good morning to all the people who will be uh, listening in. Um, good morning and, uh, and good evening. <laughs> uh, some of you uh, just came from downstairs and had a full meal, so if they fall asleep during the service, it's because they just came from a big potluck, and, uh, and, uh, and the preacher isn't very interesting, evidently. <laughs> so, um, but good to be and share in our worship with you. We do hope that you have a wonderful uh, Fourth of uh, July weekend uh, celebration as you gather with your family or friends. We hope that it's meaningful. We hope that it's fun for you, and, and of course, we hope that it's safe for you if you're doing any traveling. So. Um, we want to uh, just point out some things that are going on this week. The church offices will be closed on Monday, of course, but the uh, quilting ladies will still be hard at work uh, downstairs. Um, we have uh, uh, also have some uh, uh, board meetings on uh, Wednesday. The lay ministry and the internship committee will be meeting at beginning at 5 o'clock on, on Wednesday. And then Sunday we return to our normal worship times uh, nine o'clock worship here at Grace Lutheran and nine o'clock worship at Providence Valley. So we hope to see uh, many of you then. Uh, tonight or today, this is confusing, isn't it? Uh, we're actually using the Joyous Light uh, uh, prayer service and I hope you grabbed the pamphlet when you came in, uh, but we can get you one and let's stand and welcome those that are gathered around us this day and uh, then we'll begin. I want to thank Chris Laney for playing for us and then also for uh, leading worship as well. Jesus Christ, light of life, shine in your people here. Jesus Christ, light of life. Shine in your people here. Stay with us now, put near to flight, as evening ushers in the light. Warm the darkness with your love and light, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Light of life, shine in your people here. Jesus Christ, light of life, shine in your people here. Joyous light of glory, sacred word made human story blessed jesus christ of the father given light to earth from light of heaven holy endless source of life We will raise our songs in praise of your glory, and with all the universe unite. Joyous light of glory, sacred word made human story, blessed Jesus Christ. Of the Father given, light to earth from light of heaven, holy endless source of life. 
as we sing, O holy three in one, fount of life and love and fire divine, we rejoice in you with a pure voice of gladness as we let your light within us shine. Joyous light of glory, sacred word made human story, blessed Jesus Christ, of the Father given, life to earth from light of heaven, you and also with you let's give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise we praise and thank you O God through your son Jesus Christ our Lord through whom you have enlightened us by revealing the light that never fades night is falling and day's allotted span draws to a close the daylight you created for our pleasure has fully satisfied us. And yet, of your free gift, now the evening lights do not fail us. We praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom be glory, honor, and power to you in the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the psalm. our hands in prayer like incense rising and offer our lives to you O God God we call for you our dear hear us and help us hear and help us. Hear us and help us and all who cry. Lift our hands in prayer like incense rising and offer our lives to you. Keep us from evil. Keep us from evil. Keep us from evil and all its lies. Lift our hands in prayer like incense rising. Offer our lives to you, O God. As we turn our gaze to you, light of creation, light of creation. Light of creation, open our eyes. Lift our hands in prayer, like incense rising, and offer our lives to you. Please pray with me. 
O God, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is worthy of all praise. Let our prayer rise before you as incense, and with the lifting of our hands, may we offer our whole lives to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning, or this evening, depending on when you're tuning in, is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weakness. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Here ends the reading. And as you're able, if you would stand with me as we uh, turn now to our gospel lesson. I'm going to move a little closer to you kind people. Uh, the Holy Gospel is a reading from St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is the wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And then they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. And if any, if any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. Well, the number one resource I believe that God uses to grow us as Christian people, uh, to, to, make us, to make us better, to shape us, to, to mold us, um, the number one thing that he uses is actually other people. Um, 
other people are there to, to do that and that God uses other people to make us better people. So it's a good time to uh, maybe ask, um, am I in relationship with people that are helping me grow? Am I in relationship with people who will evoke my best self, who will call out, who will help me grow in ways that God really wants me to grow? So we kind of think about that together. And that actually leads to a problem that a lot of times the community I might want to be a part of is made up of great people wonderful people, and then I think that I'm not great enough to qualify to be in that group of people. So that's the problem. They wouldn't want me to be in that particular group that would help me grow as a person, or we should say that God is putting me in to help me grow. So exclusive is a big word for human community, and you know all about that word, don't you? Exclusive. Exclusive. Uh, gated communities that we see in highly populated areas can be what? Exclusive. Country clubs can be exclusive, right? Schools can even be exclusive. Now, when I was in high school, the way things worked in the cafeteria was when it was time for lunch, then, uh, you know, everybody just kind of self-selected, right? You, self, you self-select. You sit at tables with other people who were basically at the same level of coolness as you thought you were, kind of the same social status, right? So I was at the table I was at, and, and one day, one of the kids who sat at the more than cool kids table came over and asked me if I wanted to join them you know and and uh, so I was quite excited about that and so I did and I went and I I sat there uh, but it was really clear really fast that I was really out of my league I wasn't enjoying myself uh, at all I didn't belong there I didn't belong and I didn't feel uh, comfortable there. But I ate at that table for a couple of lunches, and, uh, and then I bailed out, and I went back to my, my regular old not-so-cool kid table. Um, because we all kind of tend to cluster, right, in community with, with people at about our level of coolness, our same level of coolness, right? Um, well, you can imagine what that table did when I asked if I could join them for lunch again. <laughs> they weren't exactly welcoming, right? Um, because I had, I had left, left them. I had left them. Well, um, some of you may be familiar with the term uh, squad goals, maybe, if you've heard of squad goals. I mean, we'll break it down here. So, uh, Squad is that everybody wants to be part of a community, right? Everybody wants to fit in. That's our squad. That's the team that we want to be on. That's the family that we uh, wish to be, be in. I mean, this squad goals has been really popular on the Internet, I guess, I guess a few, a few years, years back. But the squad is this uh, community that we all desire to be part of. And of course, uh, when we're part of a community or a group of people, we don't want it to be just about us, right? We want, it, uh, we, we, we want to have some goals, and so we have squad goals. These are the things that we're working for in life. That's where the goals come in. We want to have a goal together. We want to grow as people together. We want to achieve something together, right? Uh, we want to make an impact in our community or make an impact in our, our world. Um, and so we have goals. Now, the greatest squad that's ever existed started a long time ago by Jesus. And it included 12 of his disciples. 
and they just kind of operated, their goals just kind of operated at a, at a different level. They had, they had certain principles um, because that was really God's dream for all communities. That was God's dream for all of the human race. That's why God created you and me and every, everyone. And I think that's what's at heart at this text from Mark's gospel in which Jesus, early now in his public ministry, is back among his own people, right? He goes home. He goes home to, goes home to Nazareth. And this is actually a very interesting little story that has something to say about small towns, I think, and, and local churches. So we can think about this together uh, today as we study this text. We're told that when Jesus began to teach in the synagogue at first, all the locals were just amazed at him and his, and his wisdom. I mean, this was Jesus, the hometown boy, the local carpenter, and and they're saying, where did this man get all this, all these things? Where did he get so smart? This guy from Nazareth, our hometown. Where is all this wisdom coming from? We didn't know that he was this good. But look how good this Jesus is. It's, in, it's incredible. And at first, the people from his hometown are really impressed by, by Jesus. But then something happens. Something quickly happens in the gospel of, of Mark. In Mark's version of this story, we're not given any indication of what Jesus was preaching and teaching about. We're only told that in one breath, the townspeople are amazed at this Jesus, but in the next, you know, they start cutting him down. They start criticizing him. Something, something that, that Jesus said must have really irritated, irritated them or provoked a controversy or there were this fierce resistance that his hometown people had against him. And suddenly the golden boy, the golden boy of, of Nazareth is just a local carpenter. Isn't that Mary's boy? That's just Mary's boy over there, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and, and Simon. And, and, and don't we know his sisters, Mark tells us, you know, the people saying, and he couldn't do much of anything there anymore, not because he didn't have the power, Mark tells us, but because the people did not have the faith. That's why he couldn't accomplish much in his hometown. In fact, we're told by Mark that Jesus was amazed at the people's lack of faith there in Nazareth, which for me is kind of an amazing little verse because it really speaks to the humanity of Jesus. It gets up close and personal, I think, to what Jesus was really thinking and feeling here in, in the text. But that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of the story at all. For Jesus, you see, ultimately this was not about whether his message was offensive or whether it upset his former Nazarene neighbors. It wasn't even about the pain that he felt because of this rejection. This was about Jesus continuing along the path that God had set before him. It was about embracing God's truth and moving on with that truth of God. Jesus moving right along and then inviting the people to move right along with him. Moving the right of God's kingdom along. Moving the right of God's work along. Moving the right of God's healing along. Moving the right of God's message Along. That's what Jesus was about. So he moved right along. He didn't stay uh, worried about that he had offended the people of Nazareth. He moved right along. And it's no coincidence that as Mark tells the story, immediately Jesus takes this experience as an opportunity to direct his squad with some goals, his disciples along the pathway of ministry and to teach us in the process, what is involved in embracing and truly living into the life of faith that God is calling us to. So, hence, the squad goals. Now, do you know a little bit about squad goals? Squad goals of Jesus. Travel light, Jesus says to them. Live modestly, right? Keep it simple. You're not in it for the glory, right? 
So keep it simple. Live modestly. Live modestly. Um, and then he, he talks about... Um, um, uh, he talks about preaching the good news. So that's a squad goal. Preach the good news. You are asked to preach the good news, to drive out some demons, to sow the seeds of goodness and freedom and redemption. And while you're at it, take care of the sick people. Anoint them so that they have healing brought into their lives. So these are the squad goals. And above all, don't worry about it. If you're not welcomed when you're doing the work of God, don't worry about it. Um, just quietly withdraw, Jesus says. Don't make a scene. Dust, dust, the, the, uh, dust the dust off your shoes and, and move along. Don't, don't shrug your shoulders and make a face. <laughs> just move, move along. Be on your way. Because you see, to live the life of faith is to let ourselves be led by God and Jesus Christ and to let his truth, to let God's truth and our convictions of that truth be sufficient for the way, whether or not we're received or not received. All right? What Jesus gives you and me along the way is courage. What Jesus gives you and me along the way is patience and perseverance. And, uh, and one of the things we often tend to gloss over every time when we come together for worship, and I'm afraid this was particularly true uh, uh, through the months of the quarantine that we experienced, is that ultimately you and I come here to be sent out there. That's why we're here, so that God can send us out there into the world. So it's not about us. It's not about our entertainment. We're in this place today, and every time we gather for worship, first to give thanks and praise to God for God's many blessings, for us to listen to his life-affirming, redemptive word, and then to respond to that word in faith. You and I are being sent today to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ by word and by action in the places and amongst all of the people of our lives, our squad, all right? Jesus started 2,000 years ago, this little squad, with 11 of the most unlikely guys. You know, they were kind of chronic mess-ups, um, sons of thunder, big-time doubters, uh, little click cookie stuff is going on among the earliest disciples. Um, you know, guys who couldn't get along with each other. There was a traitor, right? There was a deceiver. But what are the odds that 2,000 years later on the other side of the world that this squad would still be going? And it is. It's still going because you are here and I am here. That's the squad. And now we know what the goal is, the squad goal, the simple act of one person caring for another, one person noticing another, one person encouraging another, correcting another, cheering on another, welcoming another, being generous to another person, developing another. I mean, that's a great thing to be able to celebrate and serve and love and give to each other. So my prayer for us today and every day is to keep on keeping on preaching the gospel, that you would keep on preaching, because you know what? We're all preachers. We're all preachers. I'm not just the preacher around here. She's not just the preacher around here. You are all preachers of the word as well. We're all preachers. Some of us just don't stand in the pulpit, and some of us don't necessarily use words, but we're all preachers. Make no mistake, we all preach, and you do too. So preach the gospel. Always preach the gospel. Preach it at all times, and preach it in all ways. And preach it even when it's difficult to preach. Amen.
we'll sing our hymn together, which is in the red, our red hymn books, To Be Your Presence. It's hymn number 546. turn now uh, for our prayers and our blessing. I'll invite you to stand, and then I'm going to draw your attention to our prayer concern list, those in our community that have asked, um, requested our prayers, and lifting up uh, two of our members that are um, undergoing surgery this coming week, uh, Kathy Martinez Storlene, and then Woody Pete. So if you would keep them uh, especially in your prayers as they undergo surgery. We'll uh, Turn to page seven for our uh, prayers and we'll sing those this evening. God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. For peace, Lord of heaven, and for our salvation, we pray to you, O God. in the whole world and peace among all peoples we pray to you O God love have mercy send to our prayer for all those who govern give wisdom and compassion we pray to you O God of love have mercy justice and freedom from oppression, we pray to you, O God. Have mercy, we listen to our prayer. For rain, sun, and harvest, and food to fill the hungry, we pray to you, O God. of love, have mercy, to our prayer. For all who know affliction, despair, wrath, and danger, we pray to you, O God. Love, have mercy, and listen to our prayer. Our prayer for all our 
beloved, our family, friends, and neighbors, we pray to you, O God. Love, have mercy, and listen to our prayer. Rejoicing in communion with saints gone before us, we pray to you, O God. God of love, have mercy, and listen to our prayer. God of love. God of love, we thank you that you have kept us under your protecting care in the day that has passed. Bring your healing to the wounds of this day, those we have inflicted, those we felt, those that trouble our world. Cover us this night with the wings of your grace and raise us to a new day with Christ, our light and our peace. Amen. And let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. To God our thanks we raise. May God Almighty bless us, guide us and defend us, and lead us into life. Amen. 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 Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.